station working for you. This is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. I will mandate the use of body cameras for every frontline state trooper by spring of 2021. Governor Eric Holcomb announcing major changes as people in Indiana and across the country push for racial equity. And requiring body cameras for state police is just one aspect of his plan. Groups are, are able to get in uh, at a level really that the, the police department can't. A new effort to curb the growing violence in Indianapolis, and it goes beyond police officers, the organizations that hope to help save lives. Some families are worried about the quality of education their kids are receiving during e-learning. Working for you, we take those concerns to the top and get answers. Now arriving, cooler temperatures and lower humidity, but for how long? I've got the answer. Thank you for joining us here on WRTV News at 6. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. First at 6 o'clock tonight, today Governor Eric Holcomb announced changes that he says will address inclusion and equity in the state of Indiana. This comes amid pushes for racial equity after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, who was killed by a police officer back in May. The big headline today, Governor Holcomb says he will require the use of body cameras for every frontline Indiana State Police Trooper by the spring of 2021. Remember, after years of discussion, IMPD finally got body cameras for many of its officers. The governor will also create a new position in his cabinet called Chief Equity, Inclusion and Opportunity Officer for the state of Indiana. He wants to create a public disparity data portal to show where the state's shortcomings are. And Holcomb wants to work with the Indiana legislature to add civilians to the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy Board. We also know that community policing is stronger when officers reflect the makeup of their community. While African Americans make up 9.8% of our state's population, they comprise just 5.8% of our state police officers. So we have more work to do. This all comes about two months after Governor Holcomb created an internal task force to find out what best changes would be to help with inclusion and racial equity and how to enact them. It's a new plan to help slow down the violence in Indianapolis. Four local organizations all received a $75,000 grant to further the services they provide to vulnerable populations. WRTV's Megan Sanctorum is working to find out how one of those groups plans to use that money and the impact it could have on the community. This is Recycle Force. It may look like any other electronics recycling facility, but here the mission is about more than saving the environment. They're also working to save lives. We use that work to train people who've never worked before in our transitional jobs program. People like Shane Shepard. He tells us he spent 12 years in federal prison. And when I came home, I didn't have much to go on, so I came here and got a job. Recycle Force provides paid job training for community members who may have spent time in jail or prison, and it gives them the support and tools they need for a better future. You go from a, any job to a better job to a career job. He says it also gives the participants hope and a sense of purpose. It gives me a moment of pause when I get that moment of boredom that might allow me to go do something foolish or might allow me to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Police say programs like this are an important piece of curbing violence. Because they're going to try to hit it from a different angle, right? They're going to try to encourage people uh, to, to, whether it's further their education or, or just find other jobs. Those things that maybe frustrate people and, and maybe cause them to act out, the grassroots groups are the ones that take care of that. As for Shepard, he's now created his own programs for those in need, and he's also working with the leadership team here. He says they will use the grant money to do deeper and after hours outreach in the community. So to invest 75,000 in an attempt to save multiple lives, I think is a drop in the bucket compared to what it would cost if one person murders another person. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, WRTV. The other three organizations receiving grants today are Voices, Community Action of Greater Indianapolis, and the Edna Martin Christian Center. Kevin. 
Rain to start the day for most of us. Maybe you heard a rumble of thunder as well. If you have a rain gauge, compare it to some of these amounts that I share with you. In Shelby County, an inch and a quarter. In Shelbyville, that's the most that I've seen. Uh, Indianapolis had 85 hundreds. Bloomington, not as much. Muncie, just under four tenths of an inch. In Lafayette, you kind of missed out on this one at five hundredths. We're dry and we'll stay that way for the next several days. Where are the thunderstorms now? pushing into Kentucky and away from central Indiana. Temperatures right now in the 70s, 79 in Kokomo. Here are your headlines. We're into the 50s tonight. We'll talk about how cool the next several mornings and how long we stay dry and comfortable coming up. See you soon, Kevin. The number of new COVID-19 cases and deaths have increased, but so has the number of newly tested people. The Indiana State Department of Health confirms 850 new cases of coronavirus. That's up from 603 new cases yesterday. The data also shows 28 new COVID-19 deaths, which is also an increase from yesterday. But it's also worth pointing out that the Department of Health reports 12,106 people who have been newly tested for coronavirus. That number was about 7,800 yesterday so that is a significant jump. So far, 2,954 Hoosiers have died from COVID-19 altogether. More than 928,000 people in Indiana have been tested for coronavirus. 8.8% of them tested positive for it. The State Department of Health also says more than 38% of Indiana's ICU beds are available. COVID-19 patients are using about 11% of the ICU beds. Non-COVID-19 patients are using nearly 51% of those beds. About 82% of the state's ventilators are available as well. And I'm hoping, you know, if we had online teaching with a real person, then, it, you know, it would be, I think, a much more positive exchange. Some families are worried about the quality of education their kids are getting during the pandemic. And one woman reached out to us with serious concerns that her granddaughter is not getting the proper education she needs to progress with e-learning. RTV6's Stephanie Wade shares these concerns and the district's response. Last week we had two assignments. So we had about an hour and a half of work. One week into e-learning at Binford Elementary, part of the Monroe County Community School Corporation, Karen Fulkerson says she feels her granddaughter is not getting the most thorough education she could be getting right now. Other than a uh, 9 a.m. conference call with the homeroom teacher, there's a very little video contact. It's not allowing for any exchanges between the student and the teacher for learning. Especially as other districts like Indianapolis Public Schools began their semester yesterday fully virtual and utilizing Zoom and other platforms to communicate with the students throughout the day. They show teachers in Indianapolis sitting in their desks, live streaming a full day uh, and having, you know, constant interaction and spontaneity with the kids and that's something that I feel is really lacking here. Fulgerson says they're also having problems with the online school system Canvas and have called the school about it. I was getting personal emails from all the teachers to try to convey course curriculum she couldn't get into her iPad to read anything. Knowing every school district has differing resources and capabilities She's hoping hers will step up or the state will step in. Then we need to ask our governor to step up and take a look at this because it's all kids in the state of Indiana that are struggling right now. Stephanie Wade. Hopefully we'll get something resolved and maybe we can have a meaningful education semester. WRTV. We have also reached out to the school district for a response and asked if they plan to make any changes to the e-learning curriculum for students. We will keep you updated when we hear back. Well, COVID-19 is overwhelming enough. Now throw in the pending flu season. WRTV is talking with the U.S. Surgeon General. Dr. Jerome Adams shared his concerns for Hoosier families. What do we do? Uh, do I have COVID-19 or do I have the flu? The symptoms may appear to be the same, but they're not. We actually have the opportunity to have one of the best flu seasons we've ever had in terms of low rates and low numbers of people dying. Uh, if we do our part to lower transmission of COVID, uh, we also have the opportunity to have a very bad flu season. And again, it, it comes back to Hoosiers making up their mind. I talk about my three W's, 
there's a fourth W and that's the will. We have to have the will to do the right thing. And I'm convinced that Hoosiers will do the right thing. I'm not in DC anymore. I'm back in Indiana. People are practical. They want to do the right thing. And I just want to make sure we continue to give them the information and the facts to do the right thing so that we can have a safe and sustained reopening. And by the way, Dr. Adams is Indiana's former state health commissioner. WRTV's Hiring Hoosiers initiative is all about helping you find job opportunities, and one way we do that is through our job feed. Indy Hanger and Supply Manufacturers wire coat hangers. They need warehouse workers. They are looking for someone to run wire making machines, someone to package the product, and someone to drive and operate a forklift. Indy Hanger is hiring for all of those positions. State Farm wants to hire an insurance sales agent in Indianapolis. It's a full time position that pays $14.25 an hour. Total resource staffing has several open positions in the Indianapolis, Plainfield and Whitestown areas. They are looking for general laborers, inspectors, machine operators and forklift drivers. Schwinn's Home Service Incorporated in Noblesville needs to hire route sales representatives. You would be responsible for selling frozen foods to new and existing customers among other responsibilities. And you can learn more about all of these jobs and how to apply at the Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page. You can find even more available positions on the job board at HiringHoosiers.com. Churches and groups in Morgan County are coming together to help their neighbors in need. How their generosity is making an impact and what you can do to help. And I'm Dave First. You've likely seen the Genesis name around town, but what was the genesis of their partnership with James Hinchcliffe? Could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship coming up in the Sports Extra Spotlight. And we're seeing the beginning of a beautiful stretch of weather. 77 degrees right now. Cool nights ahead. Notice I said plural. Nights. We'll talk about that coming up. From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. The Rebound Indiana is showing you how groups are stepping up to help Hoosier families in need and where you can get help if your family is struggling to make ends meet during this pandemic. Back in March, Good Morning Indiana's Lauren Casey showed us how Churches in Mission is a collaborative effort to help families in need. And so she traveled down to their Martinsville location where the need is growing, but so is the generosity. February I was in here and a lot of the shelves were just sparse and to walk in here now and see all of these freezers and to walk through the building and to see the additional shelves that have been built and the stock you know the stock that is on the shelves they are ready and prepared to meet the needs of this community. Tracy Clendenin is a Morgantown resident with a heart for serving her community. She often works with seniors in Morgan County a group hit particularly hard by COVID-19. Many of them just didn't go out at all or you know stay in their homes and Church's admission has allowed food to be delivered literally to the door of seniors. In Morgan County, a rural community, the lack of transportation for some residents creates an additional hurdle for food accessibility. For some people that live in this area, transportation is difficult. And so, you know, finances to get out and purchase food is one hurdle. And so the work of Church's admission, a collaborative effort to serve neighbors in need in Morgan County, has been working hard to meet a growing demand for food hygiene and utility and rental assistance. So everything that Churches and Mission is doing is just having a profound impact on people. Even Tracy found herself in need unexpectedly. For me, for me personally, I have gone through a tough time and Churches and Mission helped me on a personal individual level. So, I mean, it, it, changes in the economy and things that are happening are impacting people, <laughs> you know, I mean, from all walks of life. Whether folks need help right now during these uncertain times or more long term, Churches and Mission is working to meet the needs in several ways. Mentoring, helping people with financial counseling, financial stewardship, helping with dietary you know, elements of their life to be able to improve their quality of life. Thanks to the generosity of individuals, businesses, churches and organizations like United Way, the shelves of their Martinsville location here are fully stocked. They now have freezers and refrigerators to store perishables, all things that executive director David Maurer says wouldn't have been possible if the community hadn't stepped up these past few months. It's been a game changer for us. And he says through awareness with things like their 
virtual fundraiser this week. He hopes many more people will look for ways to help their neighbors. Quite often we live in our world, we're in the world of busyness, we're doing this and that, and we forget about those that are in need. So awareness is key. The other one is then create an action plan. Working for you, Lauren Casey, WRTV. And so here's how you can take action. WRTV is the exclusive media partner for Churches and Missions virtual fundraiser this year. We are live streaming the event on our Facebook page this Thursday night at 7 p.m. You can tune in and help them raise money to serve more people during this pandemic. There's also auction items to bid on. For steps on how to register and to receive a PIN number, just click on this story on WRTV.com slash rebound. Kevin. And Amanda, no reason to go on a radar tour and show you showers and thunderstorms because they're out of the state. This is our view now from the Motor Speedway across Turn 2, and it's a treetop view, really, of the Indianapolis. Pretty nice evening in progress. That wind is starting to calm down a little bit. We had wind gusts over 20 miles per hour through the afternoon. Check of temperatures coolest to the south and east where the cloud cover lingers and you've had the more recent rain warmer to the northwest at 80 in Lafayette. Many spots are going to drop about 25 degrees from temperatures right now. I think in Indy will drop about 20 degrees into about 56, 57 degrees by tomorrow morning. That's a nice change. Temperature drop this evening. Any clouds that you see now will fade away once the sun sets. By 10 o'clock, we should be mostly clear. By midnight, Temperature will be at 66 degrees, and this is what we'll wake up to, 57 in Indianapolis. Working against patchy fog tonight, the fact that um, the wind will be up a little bit and the air's getting drier, but working uh, for the formation of fog would be the fact that we had that moisture earlier today in the form of half an inch or more of rain in spots, so we'll watch for a little patchy fog. Temperatures for all of us in the 50s, not just tomorrow morning, but as we get to Thursday and Friday morning as well, temperatures very comfortable. The humidity stays low until we get to the weekend, then it creeps back up. R low rain chances will return over the weekend as well. There's kind of a breakdown of temperatures across the state in the morning. As you look at high temperatures, the next three days slowly warming up. Temperatures will be into the mid 80s by the time we get to the weekend. Tomorrow, still breezy and still out of the northeast, which keeps the flow of cooler, drier air into central Indiana. Temperatures of about 83 or 84 are average for this time of year. Thursday, lots of sunshine. Start to finish, enjoy it, soak it up, 80 degrees. Temperatures fall just short of 80 to the north. Most of central Indiana right at that mark. Seven day forecast, we'll put it together for you. The next three days are beautiful. There your temperatures creeping back up for the end of the work week. As we step into the weekend, right now, chance for rain looks low on Sunday. What do I mean by low? 20 to maybe a 30% chance for a shower or a thunderstorm. That comes with a little more humidity, warmer temperatures in the morning hours, and about 84 for the afternoon high. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Hey, it was another quiet day at the track. Teams won't practice again until Friday's carb day. But that doesn't mean that you don't see something about the Indy 500 all around the city. James Hinchcliffe and an Indiana company are almost everywhere you turn. In fact, call it the signs of the time. Sports Director Dave First with the Sports Extra Spotlight. It's all fairly routine for IndyCar Series driver James Hinchcliffe. Helmet goes on, red gloves go on. He slides into his number 29 Andretti Autosport Honda and prepares to go 240 miles an hour. But if you know anything about the name on the car, you realize this relationship is anything but routine. An employee from Genesis slid into my DMs, I think is what the kids say, on Instagram. It was an Instagram direct message was first contact. So first of all, sponsors never come to you out of the blue. That's not how that works. And uh, it's rarely through a social media platform that it happens, if it, if it ever does. But look around town, and it's not just words on a car. There's Genesis signs at the airport, Genesis signs on video boards. Driving on the highway, there's another Genesis billboard. And right in the heart of Speedway, the racing capital of the world, yep, Genesis and Hinch are there too. They're new to sports sponsorship, never mind motorsport sponsorship, and they have jumped in with both feet, and they are doing it better than, I mean, I hate to say it, most of the full-time partners in the series right now aren't activating the way these guys are. And the global customer experience software company with its largest single office located on Indy's west side 
is proud to have a large sign on its building as well. A group dedicated to Indianapolis, David Litico is Genesis' local site leader. Look, we, we're so excited. The only thing that would make it better was if we could actually be there in person to no cheer question. and yeah. watch from the track. But it's it's been amazing how things have gone, uh, you know, the, the opportunities that we've had. That includes making James his own face covering to wear at the track. Seen on other crewmen as well, that clever mask, it was all they're doing. They came up with this idea, I and mean, they sent it to me, they're like, what do you think? And I said, oh yeah, no, that's, uh, I'm all about that. And it turned out better than I thought. It looks a little creepy. Someone was saying it kind of looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy cut my face off and then tried to put it back on. But, uh, but I like it, I think it plays. They're here, 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 and here. I wanted to take this opportunity out in front of the big sign right here off 465 to just thank each and every person from the Genesis team for making this possible. Call it a partnership going full speed ahead. I think there are probably some of us who knew what we were getting into, but a lot of people here at Genesis had no idea that it would be this, this good. We've got commercials that are going to air, doing stuff like this. You know, they're having a lot of fun with it, but they're also getting a ton of coverage and they're doing it right. Picture perfect, and maybe, just maybe, for some time to come. Day first, WRTV Sports. Another WRTV trackside special is Thursday night. Tony Kanaan joins Day first to look at how the pandemic has changed preparation for this year's race. Brad Brown sits down with last year's Rookie of the Year. Jared Andretti remembers his dad, John. And a throwback Thursday with Danny Sullivan. Thursday night at 7.30 only on WRTV. We'll be right back. Temperatures falling tonight into the 50s, but again into Thursday and Friday morning, temperatures will be in the 50s. Some patchy fog around first thing tomorrow morning. Amanda? Thanks, Kevin, and thank you for making WRTV your choice for news. Join us again for the news at 7. We'll see you soon.